Hey everybody, um, it's really nice to be here in front of you and, and to talk a little bit about Solistic. Um, in case you're not familiar, we're uh, an IPSC-focused CDMO organization based in Belgium. Um, it's kind of a neat milestone for us because uh, a year ago on this stage, probably not this exact stage, but one in a room just like this, that's our founder and, and chief technology officer, Stefan Brahm, uh, unveiling our logo and, and our company for the first time uh, here last year. So. Um, I think the meeting on the MED will always have a kind of a special place for us as a, as a forum where we were able to kind of uh, unveil ourselves to the world. And, uh, and I'm excited here today to talk about the progress we've made over the last year and, and uh, also just briefly to give thanks to ARM and the organization to, to give us this sort of forum to talk about it because it's, um, yeah, it's been pretty exciting. Um, what I want to do with, with everybody here today is, is tell a little bit about ourselves. I think... Um, some justification is necessary for why we get to get up here and talk about IPSC as a modality that we're excited about. Uh, and then talk a little bit about our philosophy and where we think the world sits right now in terms of cell therapy. Um, as we've approached customers and as we've started to really aggressively grow over the last year, we've noticed that um, it's almost a philosophical alignment about the role that, that we could play, the role allogeneic cell therapy should play, and, and kind of the state of things generally. Um, if, if we don't agree on those things, it's really hard to agree on, on kind of some of the approach we're trying to take to solve the problems of allogeneic cell therapy. So um, talk a little bit about, about who we are, a little bit about what we believe, and then and a little bit about how we're trying to, uh, you know, without sounding too fancy, how we're trying to change the world a little bit in, in making uh, IPSC cell therapy possible in a GMP setting. So um, as a company, you may be more familiar with the name Encardia. We spun Solistic out of Encardia. Uh, last year at this conference. Um, Incardi has been in the IPSC space for over a decade. Our founder, Stefan Brahm, um, managed to get one of the first, he says one of the first, I say it's definitely the first IPSC license in Europe um, to, to work with these tools. And that, that puts it at 17 years of working in this technology for our team. Um, for the first 10 years or so, you may have bought cells, you may have bought cardiomyocytes, you may have seen Encardia's license to Blue Rock for cardiomyocyte manufacturing. That's really where we cut our teeth. Um, but uh, about 17 months ago, we were able to uh, successfully raise north of 100 million to go chase a vision of what allerg allergenic cell therapy could be, uh, bolster Encardia and, and create Solistic. And so since then, um, we've been working really hard to try to make that vision um, real. And I think a, a big part of this is vision-based because for, for anybody who's been involved in IPSC for more than 18 months, you kind of had to believe, right? You, you kind of had to Ted Lasso slap the, you know, slap the logo or else you weren't going to get anywhere. And, and as we kind of start to step into the light a little bit of, of making this stuff real, um, it's, it's the teams like ours that are going to drive this forward because, as, as you'll see, we, we do think IPSC work is, is hard and comes with some interesting challenges. And unless you have that understanding, those challenges kind of jump up and grab you and all of a sudden you're in a bad spot. Um, so from that foundation of understanding of, of what cell therapy is right now, we, we see probably some very non-controversial points. Um, there's a lot of giants that we get to stand on the shoulders of here, of bringing revolutionary therapeutics in the autologous format forward to the, to the market. Um, I, I, there's, no, there's no results like a good autologous cell therapy result in oncology right now. Um, that sort of remission and, and suppression of cancer is just revolutionary. But you see time and time again um, the limitations. You heard in the opening talk uh, from, from the conference uh, yesterday that moving these things to frontline is, is a goal, right? For, for patients and parents of patients, we want these things earlier in the therapeutic process, we want them more broadly across indications, and um, in reality, scaling out the logistics of autologous is really challenging for a lot of those things, let alone some technology limitations in solid tumor or other places that, that may not be reachable by autologous at all. So where we stand is, is as I said, on the shoulders of some giants, right? Um, but looking at everything we're not doing and feeling, at least at Solistic, almost a moral imperative to try to do it because um, we haven't spent uh, you know, more than a decade playing with IPSCs to just keep playing. Something needs to happen. 
And I won't say that, that IPS is the perfect modality for every application. You'll see later we, we don't think that's true, that our philosophy is, is, is that's probably not true. And we're not going to say that it's a perfect tool or it doesn't come with um, some significant obstacles, right? So moving to an allogeneic therapeutic, I think it's, it's probably self-evident. I don't know why you're sitting here if you think allogeneic isn't interesting because it's going to be a lot of allogeneic discussion from here on out, so I apologize. Um, having it off the shelf, having it close to the patient, having a single deeply characterized source enables all sorts of potential, but it means you have to be really, really, really good at se selecting that source and really good at characterizing it. And that's hard. And the fundamental of allogeneic uh, in, in any modality outside of IPSC or with IPSC means that you, you risk immune rejection. That's just uh, fundamentally not a risk in autologous. So you, you solve this problem of the therapies waiting in the, in the freezer for the patient to arrive, right? But then you uh, create the problem of the patient and the therapy may not get along. Uh, in the same way that I think any curious and, and motivated scientist looks at the toolbox and the, and the toy box of gene editing, right, and gets really excited and says, this could be a 15 edit cell, or this could be 27 edits, or we could create some, frankly, monster thing, this unlimited potential to craft a therapy inside the cell means you also have to be really, really good at crafting things inside the cell. And if you mess that up again, you're back to square one because you have a single source. And lastly, you know, when we talk about scale, you'll see I'll show a little bit about our facility and, and what we're excited about. One of the things we did um, with, with the capital that we raised is buy a GMP facility in mont saint Belgium that's um, ready, for, ready for manufacturing after we optimize it a little bit for allogeneic. Uh, we're really focused on bioreactor-based scale-up and differentiation. That's a fundamental for us that's been baked in from the start. It's part of the reason why, why Blue Rock was attracted to Encardia's technology at the beginning is that we were doing bioreactor-based processes, closed processes. Those enable safe and efficient scale that you can control. Um, our facility reflects that. Our philosophy reflects that. That's a big piece of, of who we are and what we feel like we can bring. But controlling these little monsters in giant tanks is incredibly challenging. You know, all they want to do is be the thing that you don't want them to be, right? <laughs> That's, um, our scientists would roll their eyes at that, but I think I'm mostly right. Um, so being able to, to offer this incredible access to patients around the world and being able to offer the promise of scale for cost of goods while risking the quality control, the fill finish, there's, there's a myriad of, of challenges that come with scale up that if you don't have a good answer for, you, you just, you can't do it. You're back to autologous. And so this is kind of how we see the world right now. Um, Maybe it's, it's our own inhibitions, maybe it's our own uh, lack of creativity and skill, but we don't see anything harder in the world to do right now than to make an iPSC-based allogeneic cell therapy. That's really because of, of the complexity and a lot of the risks that I highlighted there. Um, all of this is hard. Anybody working in cell therapy is doing a hard thing. But we think this is about as hard as it gets because of the, the, the inherent challenges, the modality, and the risks you have to take at this nascent stage to engage in it. And our job, our mission at Solistic, is to address the risks that we can control and move, when you see this chart, we want to we wanna make this a shorter, fatter pyramid, right? Let's move the risk profile down for our customers, and let's grow the number of people looking at this modality. And ultimately, our vision is, is to make it so that you can make a decision um, not based on the limitations of what you have, but what's possible and what's right for your therapeutic. If you're working in immuno-oncology and you think an IPS uh, route is the way for you to go, we want to be able to move you to the left and make that a fatter triangle. Um, we want a bigger tent. Um, we don't think that it's, it's, you know, every therapy is not going to be an IPS allogeneic therapy. Every therapy is not going to be allogeneic. It, it's a big tent with the right answer based on the right therapeutic, right? But right now, so many decisions are being made on modality, not on therapeutic, and we're trying to, to address that a little bit. How are we doing that? Um, as I said, we're IPS only, and, and this, is, um, this is every project we do, right? Everything we do starts with a donor, we edit it, we bank it, we differentiate it, we expand it, we freeze it down, and we ship it to our customers so they can get it into patients. When we looked at these challenges that I've highlighted, there's two areas that we've spent a lot of time on proactive platform development. 
And, and there's no bigger cliche, I think, than saying partner and platform and CDMO, and I apologize for that. I tried to come up with better words, and I failed like seven times. But for the, the customers and the partners we work with, we want to offer really um, deep expertise and proactive development in these two areas that help accelerate and de-risk your decision to work in Allogeneic and certainly help de-risk your decision to work with us. Uh, we do the cell banking in the middle, and, and again, maybe I'm just hungry. I think this looks like a Neapolitan ice cream sandwich with our colors in this. We, we do the cell banking, but I think in terms of innovation and in terms of acceleration, um, we spend a lot of time and, and, and money and expertise in developing on the cell line development side and on the differentiation, differentiation expansion side. So we talk about cell line development. It's environment. In our facilities, we do this in dedicated suites in a controlled, non-classified environment to enable agility and the right cost basis as you go through this arduous process of cyclical gene editing, well, reprogramming, and then gene editing. Um, if you do this wrong, this could be 36 months worth of work before you even get to a therapeutic construct. That doesn't work. And if you really do it wrong, it's 36 months of work in some sort of GMP environment that doesn't exist. So we're going to move that out. We're doing that in a well-controlled, well-documented environment. We do it in a, with multiplex editing technologies, and we do it with high-throughput clonal selection technologies, and frankly, the most brilliant gene editing and, and, and cell line development team in the world to make this easy, well, easier. And in our GMP facility, um, we spend a lot of time, for anybody squinting, believe me, I, I clearly enjoy talking. I'm happy to talk to you about our facility as much as you want. We're really excited because we were given the chance to build an allogeneic cell therapy facility. Every other CDMO in the world that's pursuing autologous and allogeneic, pursuing a diversity of projects, has to have their facility molded by that. We do the one thing. It's allo and it's IPSC. And so our facility can run more efficiently, um, more effectively in grade B and grade C environments to do the cell banking and, and the bioreactor based manufacturing that you need than anybody else in the world. Because we're, we're cheating a little bit, right? If we only do this, then our facility should reflect that. And so this is kind of how it works in, in the prettiest version of this diagram. Our manufacturing processes for making your cell line, our manufacturing processes in dif differentiation and expansion with your therapeutic construct baked in. So we deliver you back a, a, a cell line and a differentiated cell product that has your therapeutic contained within it, within it. And then we have the facility to support you from your preclinical, clinical, and commercial manufacturing throughout the duration of the project. Um, we're not naive to say that, that supply chain is sole source. We're not naive to say that there's not plenty of people out there who have really incredible gene editing constructs, really incredible capabilities to make great cell lines. We're happy to leverage the parts of the platform that resonate with you, but this is our model. If we're gonna do the one thing, we're gonna bring it forward in a really effective way. We're gonna support the risks that we've identified that we can control and lower, and we're gonna offer real advantages to you as you're looking at how to bring a therapeutic forward that impacts the most people the most effectively. So, you know, that means a lot of very practical things as well, right? If it's our processes, it's our supply chain. If it's our processes, it's our CMC support for you. And you can decide where that meets on your spectrum, but we know that you can't possibly work with a partner like we're proposing without that sort of support. So if you want us at the regulatory meetings, we'll go. If you want us to author those sections, we'll be there. Um, and if you want to be able to iteratively innovate on your program, we have scaled up and scaled down models for every one of our platforms to reach these immuno-oncology relevant cells for NKs, the vast rainbow of T cells that we discover. I, I heard of two new T cells this week, and I thought we had great T cell platforms. So we have this, um, the ability to quickly evaluate your product specific impacts on our platforms at the right scale, deliver you back the decision making data you need, and then honestly, run like hell. Because if you're gonna already have to spend the investment to take, even at our best, right, I think we can cut, um, couple of years out of the development timelines of an IPS project. But even then, we're still talking about many, many months. So once you're ready, once we have that development candidate, I know you want to run. And being able to scale up and scale down effectively from 100 mils to 5 liters to 10 liters to whatever you need is part of what we want to offer as well. So a very realistic and risk-driven approach to do one thing, do it right, and hopefully help you change the world uh, in, in immuno-oncology. 
So that's us. That's all I got. There's a thank you slide next, but I'm done. Appreciate it.